curricula from the YouTube channel Learn Along. It's impacts, difficulties, and yes, strategies. A medically oriented term, dyscalculia describes a severe disability in learning and using mathematics. There has been far less attention given to those who have dyscalculia. These individuals experience difficulties with mathematics and quantitative learning. What exactly is quantitative learning? It involves discrete and structured data. Let's take this dresser pictured to your left. What would you need to know to recreate this dresser if you were a carpenter? You would tell the carpenter that it stands 3.4 feet tall and weighs 94 pounds. It contains three shelves with two cabinets. I seen one at the Hennessy's Furniture Store. It was regular $189.99, but it's now on sale for 15% off. I have 15 books that I need a new home. Would you have difficulty collecting this data? Quantitative learning involves measuring and gathering information about quantities and producing numerical data and values. Individuals with dyscalculia will have difficulties with statistical and numerical analysis of data and manipulating existing data. It may also trickle over to issues with counting the number of syllables in words. There would also be difficulties in investigating and conducting observations that includes having to analyze numerical data. There are difficulties in creating structure with this collected data. Discalcula. Any numerical data that can be counted, measured, and expressed in numbers. Gathering this data usually starts with questions such as how many, how much, followed by a definite answer. People with dyscalculia would have difficulty marking tests, conducting experiments where the above data is needed, conducting and analyzing surveys and market reports, and of course metrics. But you don't have to have dyscalculia to have issues with metrics. This data is more concise and close-ended. It's not open for interpretation. So let's take this example. I have $3.75 in change, but I also have $20 in bills in my purse. Yet my bank account is at a negative $6.36, despite the fact that I sold 236 items from my inventory last month. The great thing is I have 2,300 that have viewed my website today. This is known as discrete data. There is only one answer. This data contains positive and negative numbers. Bob, how many minutes did it take you to get the work this morning? This morning, boy, it took me 25 minutes because of that blasted traffic. Well, normally it only takes me 10 minutes. I'm fed up with it all, my dear. I feels like going on unemployment.
isn't he the cutest? A whole section dedicated to this dude. And if you're going to comment down in the comment section, why not think of a, a name for him? I, I'd like to use him again in future videos and if we can put a name to him. Got any ideas? So here's another example. Sarah, how long did it take you to do your homework? Last night, it took me three and a half hours. I can usually get it done in 60 minutes. So I have a word problem for you to solve. And I'm going to give you the answers at the end of this video. So you can put the video on pause and read what's here on the screen or you can listen to me. I'm going to read it out there right now and and then after I finish reading you can put the video on pause and see if you can solve it. So it's a numerical word problem. In grade 8 I always had the biggest issue with these. I just couldn't make heads or tails of them. So um, now today, no problem with them. All right, so here we go. Kim is three years younger than Ashley. So what you want to do is you want to find what Kim and Ashley's weight is, meaning they got on a scale and weighed themselves. And you also want to find out what age they are. So Kim is three years younger than Ashley. Ashley got on the scale this morning and realized she is eight pounds more than Kim. Ashley will be 28 years old next month. Kim decided she was going on a diet two weeks ago, at which point she was 139 pounds and was excited to discover this morning that she lost two pounds. So again, the solution is at the end of the video. So I take it you've put the video on pause and now you're back with me. Let's continue on to the next slide. What we just encountered just now with the word problem, that was structured data. Numbers can change, but during certain times, it will only have one answer. People with dyscalculia may have a hard time quickly organizing and searching for answers, especially if they have to gather their answers from a database. Items such as customer account info, customer purchases, new products, different payment methods, order fulfillments, revenue minus expenses, inventory now on hand, and now comes product returns, and let's not forget those nasty government taxes. What do you think of this fella? I had a fun time creating him. So, and yes, a spreadsheet can be a nightmare. So what is the impact? We use mathematics on a daily basis, but how can it impact your world? Can you think of a few ways where math is used daily. When you buy a movie, when you go to the local dollar store, when your friends compare the stats of your favorite sports team, reading the clock on the school classroom wall, or even at your workplace for that matter, when you're needing a, to budget your bills and bank account, working the cash at your job, and yes, looking at 
a nasty spreadsheet at your work placement. Can you see how this can be extremely overwhelming? The struggle is real. Feeling extremely anxious can be a way of life for someone with dyscalculia. They may become very frustrated and even shut down. Many children are undiagnosed and go through math classes stressed to the max. Without the support, one could go through life without the basic math skills. And it's known that many adults with dyscalculia go through life with only an elementary level of math comprehension. The impact on a person's self-esteem can only be understood by those with these difficulties. What could a student experience both inside and outside of school? Frequent difficulties in math and may confuse the symbols as noted here on this page. Trouble reading analog clocks and doing up calculations to their money on hand. When given a word problem, have a hard time understanding what is important and what is not. That was my issue growing up, one of my issues. They may do better with science and geometry as it requires more logical thinking over the use of formulas. But the higher the level, the more difficulty they end up having in the science and geometry. Trouble comprehending and remembering formulas, concepts, rules, and sequences has trouble seeing the relationship and correlation between numbers and patterns, has trouble placing facts in a logical sequence in order to find a solution, difficulty with spatial math in regards to time, measurement, direction, and sequence, reluctant to learn new concepts and unable to comprehend math vocabulary, Difficulty reading, copying, visualizing, or verbalizing numeric processes. I used to work in a resource room at one of the schools in Ontario, and I used to help this young student. And whenever new material trickled down the pipeline for the teachers uh, to be teaching the class, and especially in the areas of math, he would have a fit. Now, he was only young, but he used to tear up the classroom, run outside, and it was because he just didn't know how to deal with his stress and anxiety. Research has shown, while it is difficult to obtain a diagnosis from children under a certain level of grade school mathematics, it is, however, a higher likelihood if a child is exhibiting signs during kindergarten, they have a higher chance over other kids being diagnosed with dyscalculia. Now some strategies for you. When using word problems, relate them personally to your child's life. So if you're a teacher or homeschooling, or even if you're a student and you come across a word problem, try to rearrange it so that it's relating to you and you'd be surprised how quickly you can start to understand and comprehend. When telling time-based problems, avoid saying half past quarter to. I know for years and years and years, it was difficult, uh, impossible for me to understand those terminology. Use concrete demonstrations to practice before moving on to symbols. 
Evaluate weekly instead of bigger exams and publics. We all know the anxiety, even without dyscalculia, and imagine if you're stressed out because you're not understanding and comprehending. Encourage to use a calculator, provided they can show their steps. Highlight keywords in the directions and steps needed to solve the problem. Have them cross out all unnecessary words. English is my first language and basically my only language. And even with those word problems, I felt like I couldn't even understand the English language. Reduce the number of questions, but with the process shown for the first one. Have them use a computer software program for immediate feedback. Have a reference sheet for vocabulary and formulas. Have them work with a peer and give an extra time for tests related material. So did you learn something here today? I hope you did. Be sure to stick around for the solution to the word problem that I gave earlier. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more. Also by subscribing and liking the video and hitting the notification bell, it lets YouTube know that these videos on this channel are worthy for others to also be viewing and watching. And you never know, all of us together, how many we can help and impact. And let me know if this helped you in any way. Let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to respond to the comments. And it's been a great pleasure. See, look, I even got a cup of tea, <laughs> cup of tea or coffee waiting for you. And that big piece of cake is like a half a cake so I can share that too. And have a super fantastic day. Now for the solution to that problem. And here you go. Kim was three years younger than Ashley. And Ashley will be 28 next month. So that means she's 27 now. And if Kim is three years younger, so we have 27 minus 3 equals 24. Kim is 24 years old. Ashley is eight more pounds than Kim. Kim was 139 pounds, but lost two pounds. So 139 minus the two pounds equals 137. Kim is now 137 pounds. Ashley is eight more pounds. So 137 plus eight pounds equals 145. Ashley is 145 pounds. So did you get it right? I will be putting a lot more logic problems on this channel. So be sure to stay tuned, subscribe, hit the notification bell. All right. Have a super fantastic day, everyone. God bless.